As I continue along on modeling the parts, I think the next part that I will model is this lift plate. And so we've done the base and we'll do this part next. So we'll go down and find the drawings for the lift plate. And I recommend that you attempt to model the part on your own before you look at my solution. So I would go to the drawing, model it yourself, and then go back and return to this video and model the part my way. So let's look at how I would do that. When I open up the part where I left off yesterday, I see that this stand, the base came in at this home position, and I would really prefer that it came with the top actually pointing up. So I'm going to right click on the view cube and I'm going to set the current view as the home position and I'll, I'll leave it on, I'll fit the view. And so now whenever I open this file, it will come in in uh, this position. So I'm going to go to the front view and I want to ground this part. I want to create a new component. So I'll create a new component and I'm going to call this lift plate and I'm going to hide the base for now because I, I don't really need it visible and I'll expand the origin of the lift plate make sure that's active I'll start a new sketch on this plane and I'm going to draw a rectangle about the origin about like that I'm then going to draw a horizontal line and I see that this triad for the 3D sketch comes up so I'm going to turn off that 3D sketch and then I want to put this line at the origin so I'll do coincident I'll select the origin I'll select the midpoint of this line and so that is now at the origin let's go ahead and dimension this line two inches now I recommend drawing one line or one rectangle or one circle and dimension it immediately for a sense of scale. So I should have put this line in first. I'm then going to draw a vertical line coming up to here and I want it to go to the midpoint of this horizontal line. And so I've got it going to the midpoint. I'll now put a horizontal or vertical constraint on this line. Let's change these two lines to construction. All right, then I'm going to put an overall dimension on this rectangle as 2.75. And I'm going to do an overall height. But before I do the height, let's dimension from here to here, uh, 0.375. And then I'll dimension the overall height as 2.5. Okay, so so far my sketch turns black. It's all fully defined. I'm going to put some additional geometry in here. So I'm going to draw a rectangle about like this. And I want the midpoint of this line at this point right here. So I'll do coincident this point to shift midpoint of this. And then I'll dimension this rectangle from here to here is 0.75. and vertically is also 0.75. Now I could make this equal to this, but there might be a chance that I would change that in the future to two different dimensions. So I'll go ahead and put in two dimensions in case I want, might want to change this one or this one separate from the other one. And then I'm going to draw some circles here. And so I'll draw a circle here and a circle here. I'll make this circle 0.25 and I'll do equal this circle equal to this one. Those circles turn dark. Now I'm going to draw two more circles that don't have anything to do with the drawing but we'll use those later on. So I'm going to draw another circle here 0.5 and I'll draw a circle here and make this one equal to this one. Uh, later on we'll do an FEA analysis of this part and one of the common tools or tricks to doing FEA is to split a face where you're going to put a constraint or a load. So we're going to use these 0.5 circles to split a face. 
All right, that sketch is fully defined. I'll finish that sketch. I'll save my file and then I'm going to extrude. So I'll do extrude and I'm going to select this area, this inside this donut and this area. And I'm going to do a distance symmetrical, a total distance of 1.49. We'll say okay to that. All right, then I'm going to do a fillet and I'm going to select this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge. And I'm going to do that fillet as 0.25. And then I'm going to add another set of fillets and I'm going to select these edges. And I'm going to then place the radius of those edges as 0.125. We'll say okay to that. Did something right? Save it. Okay, then I'm going to do shell and I don't want to do tangent chain because I'm only going to do part of this and all of this is connected together. So I'm going to turn off tangent chain and I'm going to select this face, this face, this one, this one. So those faces and I see that I missed a, a fillet or have an incorrect fillet over here. So before I put in that shell I need to edit this fillet and select fix that so I'll edit that feature and I need to uh, select this edge as well with the control key we'll say okay to that and uh, so I didn't catch that the first time around when I looked at it and now I'll do the shell and so I'll uh, uncheck tangent edge this face this face this face I'll also select these two holes. I'll select this face, this one, and this one. And our shell thickness will be 0.0625. Okay, so there we see our shell part. And then I'm going to turn that sketch back on again. And I'm going to use this circle to split this face and the face on the other side. Now we don't really need that for the model, but we need it for FEA. So I'm going to do a split face. It asks me for the faces I want to split. I want to split this face and this face. And then I'll select the splitting tool and I'm going to select this circle. And I'm going to try to select this circle as well. And I see that it doesn't highlight. I'll hold down the control key and I can't get so that circle at the same time. So I'll have to do this in two steps. So I'll do split face again. and I'll select the two faces and then I'll get my split tool I'll select this circle I'll say okay to that and hide the sketches all right so I have this part completed I'm going to change the color of uh, this body so I'll right click and go to the appearance and I'm going to drag this appearance or whatever appearance you want onto the body. I'll then turn on the visibility of the base and I see that I have these two components in the same location. So what I want to do is put some joints on here to allow this part to translate but I want the base to stay where it is. So I'm going to right click on the base and I'm going to select ground so that that base is grounded. So I want to allow this part to translate only. So I will uh, turn on the visibility of the origin of the base and the visibility of the origin of the lift plate. And I'm going to move this lift plate to uh, the side. Notice I've grounded the base so it can't be moved. I'll do J for join. I'll capture the current position and I'm going to select the origin on the lift plate and I'll select the origin on the base and it moves those two together but I want to be able to translate or move that in a straight line so I'm going to put a slider on this and it's going along the correct axis along the Z axis so I don't need to change that so I'll say okay to that. Now we cheated a little bit we don't have any connecting components going between these two components but in the digital world we can cheat and we can put in the desired end motions as we're going along and then design our components around our desired end motion. I'll turn off the visibility of 
the origins of those two components for now. I'm then going to model the lower rivet and the upper rivet. And we see that these two components are almost identical with only a change in length between here and here. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll create two components. So I'll go to the top level and I'll create a component named lower rivet and I'll create a second component that I'll name upper rivet. Now I'm going to temporarily hide the joints. I don't need to see those symbols and I'll hide the base and I'll go to the lower rivet and I'll start a new sketch on the YZ plane and then I'm going to draw a rectangle above the origin about like that and I'll draw a rectangle over here and I'll draw a rectangle over here I'll do a midpoint constraint between this line and the origin I will then dimension the distance from here to here as 1.645 and I'll dimension the width of this rectangle as 0.0625 and then I'll dimension the diameter so select this line first this will be our axis of revolution I'll select this line and I'll select this line I'll right click and I'll set diameter dimension and I'm going to do that as 0.245 and I'll select this line again and I'll select this line I'll right click I'll say diameter dimension and I'll do this one as 0.47 and then I'm going to do equal I'll make this line equal length to this line and I'll make this line equal length to this line it all turns dark it's all fully constrained I'll do a revolve and I'll select all three of these areas to revolve I want to revolve around this axis I'll say OK to that I'm then going to put some fillets here on these edges. So I'll do fillet, I'll select this edge, and I'll select this edge, and I'll do that as 0.015. I want to put an appearance on here, and so I'll uh, go to that body and I'll right click, I'll do appearance, and I'm going to get a, uh, a metal a chrome appearance. I'll go to my metals, I'll go to chrome, and I'll drag this chrome, and I've got it on body, so I'll drag it to this body. i put a chrome appearance on this part. I'll save it. I'll go back and I'll turn on my base again, and I really want this component up here. So I'm going to do J for join. I'll select the midpoint of this cylinder, and then for the second component, I'll select between two faces, between this face and this face. And I will select the snap position. We see that it's going to put that halfway in between. And then I want that to be only revolution or even a fixed position. And I think I'm going to do that as a rigid joint between those two. Okay, now, there is a tiny little bit of interference right in here, and we can assume, or we'll assume that when this is riveted on here, that it slightly distorts either the rivet or this base. Otherwise, we have to change the design a little bit to eliminate that interference. But I want to put another copy of that lower rivet. I'll right click on the lower rivet, and I'll do copy, and I'll right click and I'll do paste. And so now I have a, a second rivet here, and let's move this uh, down here, and then we'll join this one. So I'll do J for join. I'll select the midpoint of that cylinder. For the second component, I'll say between this face and this face, using this circle as a snap point. And I want that to be rigid, so we have those two components. Now we'll do the components for the 
upper rivets. Now I would really like to be able to drag these components in position and it looks like it's going to allow you to drag it with that blue line. When I drop it, it doesn't actually move it. That would be really nice to be able to rearrange the components. If you know of a way to do that, let me know uh, how to do that. And I'm wondering if it has to do with the copy and paste, the, the orders of these. Perhaps if I drag the orders of the copy and paste in the timeline. In any case, I'm going to do the upper rivet. So I'm going to hide the base and I'll hide the lower rivets. I'll make the upper rivet active. And I'm going to do this one slightly different. So we see different ways of modeling essentially the, the same component. So I'll make my origin visible. I'll start a new sketch this time on the uh, XZ plane. And this time instead of rotating rectangles, I'm going to draw some circles here. So let's dimension these circles. And I'll dimension the smaller circle as 0.245 and I'll dimension the larger circle as 0.5 and so that sketch is fully constrained. I will then do extrude and I'm going to select both the inside portion and the outside portion. I will extrude this symmetry, total distance and for the distance I'm going to put in 1.51 plus parentheses 0.0625 times 2. Have that 1.51 plus 0 0.0625. I'll say OK to that. Now I'll make that sketch visible again and I'll extrude again. This time I'll just get this donut shape in between the two circles and I will do symmetric total distance the 1.51 and cut that away. I'll then put my fillets on the edge, or 0.15, 0.15. I'll hide that sketch, I'll hide the coordinate system, and I'll put my properties on here, my appearance. So I'll go to the appearance, and I'll drag the chrome onto this component. I'll go back to the top level of the assembly. Now I want this up here, so I'll do J for join. I'll select the midpoint of that cylinder for second component, I'll select mid plane between here and here. I'll use this circle to place that. I want that as a rigid joint. And then I'll right click and I'll do a copy on the upper rivet and I'll do paste and let's move this over here. And then I'll do J for join, select the midpoint of that cylinder, second component halfway in between here and here and I'll use a circle and we'll say okay to that. Alright, if I turn on all of the components that I have so far and we test this out, so those two upper rivets move with this lift plate and then these two rivets are grounded in place or they're their rigid joint in place with the base so, th so that they don't move. I'll go back through here and any capture positions that I have I'm going to delete those. So here I have a capture position I'll delete that one and I have a capture position here I'll delete this one. Test it out again make sure that everything is as expected.